Okay, let's try an example. A control system has the following open loop transfer function. Kg of s is equal to k over s minus 1 times s plus 2 times s plus 3. Sketch the root locus by implementing the following steps. The first one is, how many loci are there? And you mark them on the s plane. There are three poles and no zeros, so there are three loci. We will mark those in a moment. How many real axis segments are there? And we mark them on the S-plane. Remember, the real axis segments are to the left of an odd number of poles and zeros. So since we have three poles, there are going to be two real axis segments. Let's go down to the S-plane, okay? So first, we're going to mark the horizontal axis as our real axis sigma. And then we're going to mark the vertical axis as j omega, our imaginary axis. And then we're going to mark our three poles. So we're going to have a pole at 1, a pole at negative 2, and a pole at negative 3. Since our real axis segments are to the left of an odd number of poles and zeros, our real axis segments are going to be between 1 and negative 2 and to the left of negative 3. Rule 3, if any, match each pole with a zero on the s-plane. For this example, we don't have any zeros. So we're going to calculate the asymptotic angles, theta, equal to 2k plus 1 times 180 degrees divided by alpha. Remember, alpha is equal to n minus m. So for the example we're doing now, it's the number of poles minus the number of zeros. So alpha is equal to 3 minus 0, or 3. So what we have here is 2k plus 1 times 180 degrees divided by 3, or 2k plus 1 times 60 degrees. So our asymptotic angles are going to be 60 degrees, 180 degrees, and negative 60 degrees, which can also be referred to as 300 degrees. So now, let's go look at our sketch again. So this shows us already that we have one asymptote that is at 180 degrees, which is this one. It does not match with a zero. So this pole at negative 3 actually shoots to negative infinity along the 180 degrees. So now, in order to determine where the breakaway points are for the asymptotes at 60 and negative 60 degrees, we have to go to our next rule and find the centroid of the asymptotes. Calculate the centroid of the asymptotes by using the sum of the poles minus the sum of the zeros divided by alpha. So this is going to be 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 0, because there are no poles, divided by 3, which equals negative 4 thirds. So now we're going to draw the centroid of the asymptote as a dot on the s-plane, and then draw the asymptotic angles as dashed lines on the s-plane. So, negative 4 thirds, this is negative 1, would be about here. So there's our dot. And then we know that this is where the asymptotes break away and that they're going to have angles of positive and negative 60 degrees with respect to the real axis. So we now know that these two poles will move towards each other. and they're going to break away somewhere in here. In order to determine where the breakaway point is, we have to see our next rule. To find the breakaway and entry points for any poles that have not been matched to zeros, we use the polynomial n of s d prime of s minus n prime of s d of s equals zero. You throw away any roots that are not on the root locus and draw the final complete root locus on the s plane. K n of s over d of s can be written as k times the quantity 1 over s cubed 
plus 4s squared minus plus s minus 6. So this means that n of s is a 1 and d of s is s squared plus 4s squared plus s minus 6. So n of s times the derivative is 1 times 3s squared plus 8s plus 1 minus the derivative of n, which is a constant, so that's 0. So 3s squared plus 8s plus 1, you set that equal to 0. And then you solve for the roots. And when we solve for the roots, we get s is equal to negative 0.13 and negative 2.53. Since we look at our sketch and see that negative 2.53 is not on the root locus, we know that this one is not the centroid for the breakaway, it's not the breakaway point. So that means that the breakaway point is at negative 0.13. So we come down here and we mark negative 0.13. And then we show that these two poles come together and break away from the axis right here and follow the asymptotes off to infinity. Step six, use the ralph Hurwitz criterion to determine the range of K values for stability and mark them on the root locus plot. All right, here's the sketch of the root locus generated in MATLAB. So first, we're going to show that the poles start at K equals zero. And there are three poles. So here's where the gain K is equal to zero. And they move towards the zeros of the closed loop transfer function as K approaches infinity. So here's one that's going to negative infinity as K approaches infinity. And here are two that are going to positive infinity as K approaches infinity. So now we're going to zoom in so that we can get some more details about what exactly is happening as the closed loop poles go from unstable to stable based upon the gain k. So recall that this point here, the breakaway point, is negative 0.131. So the first thing we're going to do is to find the gain k at this point. So if we have 1 plus k n of s over d of s equals 0, then k is equal to negative d of s over n of s. And we're going to define that at s equal to negative 0.131. And when we solve that, we get that k is equal to 6.06. .06. So that the gain right here at the breakaway point is k is equal to 6.06. .06. Now we're going to build our ralph Hurwitz criterion in order to determine the range of K for stability. We know that we have some instability when the closed loop poles are in the right half plane. So what we really want to determine is the crossover points right here and right here when it crosses over the imaginary axis. So remember that the characteristic equation, delta of S is equal to S cubed plus 4S squared plus s minus 6 plus k. So when we build the table, the first row, s cubed is 1, 1. And the row s squared is 4, negative 6 plus k. The row S is negative 10 plus K over negative 4 and 0. And the last row is negative 6 plus K. So in order for this system to be stable, we need negative 10 plus K over negative 4 to be greater than 0 which means that k is greater than 6, and we need negative 10 plus k to be greater than 0, which means that k is less than 10. 
So in order for the system to be stable, K must be between six and 10. So that means right here at this point, that's where K is equal to six. And then right when it crosses over here, that's where the gain K is equal to 10. So the last thing we're going to do is to calculate the closed loop holes at K equals six and K equal 10. So when k is equal to 6, we have s cubed plus 4s squared plus s. And we set that equal to 0. And the poles are 0, negative 0 0.267, and negative 3.732. So the closed loop pole at 0 is right here. The other pole is a little bit to the left at negative 0.267, and then we have one way out here at negative 3.732. When k is equal to 10, the characteristic equation is s cubed plus 4s squared plus s minus 4 plus 4. Set that equal to 0, and the roots are i negative i and negative 4. So here we have the crossover point i and then here negative i. So this is where k is equal to 10. The two poles have separated and one's going up and one's going down. And then we have one out here at negative 4.